it's day 11 and apparently I was found unconscious uh, by a group of naval drivers <laughs> drives people and uh, they, they found me with mild fever I, I think I was going into shock I don't know why I don't know how oh, I'm having really bad abdominal cram cramps back pain with constant Di diarrhea Ugh. and vomiting and it's like I don't know why but there's there's nothing but rodents everywhere Ugh. I got I got it's like little crawling mice everywhere it's, Ugh. Oh. I'm in a bed I'm in a bed of hay and I don't know I don't know what to do but there's like mice and rat poop and and feces and everything every everywhere oh my stomach is my back oh 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 it's it's day 12 um on my expedition um i was out here with a group researching the haunt of virus and we somehow got separated i woke up this morning it's daylight out as you can see and I talked to the local tribesmen about the disease and the virus, and they say that I've already passed the first stage, which is the febrile stage. And um, that would be accompanied by a headache and a slight fever, about 101 degrees. It's really hard to walk now and really hard to keep moving because of the, the fact that I'm having severe shortness of breath due to the, the virus taking in. It's called the cardiopulmonary stage. Oh, I gotta sit down for a second and catch my breath. It is really hard to breathe because I'm having a breathing rate of only 24 breaths per minute. And I gotta hurry up and find my colleagues before shock sets in, which is the third stage. It's called the diuretic stage. I keep vomiting and having severe diarrhea. Ugh, gotta, gotta keep moving though to find my colleagues. There's nothing but rat droppings everywhere. I think I contracted the virus about 10 days ago from deer mice and uh, other rodents. I contracted it. Um, I heard from the native tri tribal people that the people, most people at risk are uh, the hikers and campers and bikers and people out in the woods that are constantly around rat droppings and rat feces. Um, I just have to find my way back to my colleagues. As you can tell, I'm really sick and really weak from this virus. I need to find my way back before I start developing shock which is the third stage of the virus I can barely even stand up barely breathe fossil record fossil records show evidence that the virus could have been transmitted through myriad rodents from about 20 million years ago. Um, it's really common. It's more common to catch the virus now. And it's warmer because the mice are constantly playing and mating with each other, spreading the virus. Ugh, I think I'm going to be sick again. And I'm out here researching um, for the Hantavirus. We had a male 
present at the local hospital a few months ago. His IgG antibodies were tested and there was an increase, which shows us that he, he there was one of the, the symptoms of the hantavirus, which causes the hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. Um, so we've been sent out here to research and find deer mice, which are the rodents that uh, are natural carriers for the hantavirus. So we're out here researching. I found some mice droppings. Um, I haven't been able to trap any deer mice, but the hantavirus is very virulent. It's uh, enclosed in a lipid envelope. It's very hard to kill, although the UV sunlight does, does kill it. Um, and it is susceptible to 10% bleach. There's been a couple of cases at the local hospital here. So we've been sent out here to, to trap some deer mice and, and to, to figure out where the hantavirus is coming from. Um, men are more susceptible to this disease, to this virus. There's a 44% mortality rate. And I haven't been able to actually locate any deer mice yet. Um, the community is a little bit nervous because some men have come into the local hospital recently. Uh, it's the virus is a single strand RNA genome and it gets into the host through the endothelial cells on the surface the cell surface receptors it matures in the plasma membrane and as I said it's very virulent so we're, we're a little bit nervous about being able to figure out where this hantavirus is coming from uh, you get it through inhaling urine, rat, deer mice, or rat urine, feces, or any saliva. Um, the camp, where we're at right now in the woods, this is why we're out here, campers and hikers are at risk because of the rodent population. It's also during the summer, and the, the population is a lot bigger than it is during the winter. The, the rodents don't get it from, like, from breed, the mother to, uh, to child rodent, that's not how they pass it, it's through aggressive biting. It is rare for humans to get it through mouse bite, a mouse bite, or through, you can get it through an open wound on your skin too, although that's very rare. Most people get it just from inhaling the, the urine and the feces of the mice, and that's how you get the hantavirus. Um, no, we haven't seen any yet over here. There's no person-to-person -person transmission, so if I had the hantavirus, I couldn't pass it to another person. No animals or dogs or cats can get the virus either. It's, it's a worldwide virus from the family of the Bunaviridae. Um, so it's not worldwide, although in the United States, although in the United States, the deer mice are the, are the rodents that pass it around. It's, this, it's spherical in shape. The virus is spherical in shape and it's, 80 to 110 nanometers in diameter so it's fairly it's a fairly large virus um you know i've lost one of my colleagues and and I'm, I'm a little bit concerned because we're in the woods right now although you can get it from uh in ha from being in a building that is inhabited with rodents i'm just a little bit nervous because i can't find my colleague and and i have seen some deer mice running around Shut up for a second. There was m m m mouse poop. There was mouse poop everywhere. We need to get you to the hospital. Shh. Everywhere. Matt, we need to check your we need to check your oxygen and saturation. Matt, we need to get you to the hospital. We need to check your platelet count. I'm Matt, dead. I think you alive? I think your lungs are full of fluid. I'm check his pulse. Okay, are we good? Yeah, we're good. In order to make sure that you don't get the Hanna virus, just make sure that you keep your house clean, free of mice. Um, that'll be, you won't contract the disease that way. If you do come around rat poop and stuff like that, take precaution. Wear rubber gloves, clean it up. Don't pick it up dry. Spray it with a disinfectant, household cleaners. Um, mix it with water. Uh, make sure it's damp. Put it in baggies and double bag it and toss it out in the trash can. Anything that has touched it, the rat poop, just make sure that you take outside and leave it outside and let the sun um, 
kill the virus strand for about a week. And that is all we have for you on the Hunter virus, human Hunter virus pulmonary syndrome. Thank you and bye.